<laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Brownstein from Windchime Farm, where we grow healthy food naturally. Windchime Farm is a small family-owned operation on the outskirts of Rocky Ford, where we produce a variety of, of items, including uh, heritage pork, pastured poultry, eggs, heirloom produce, and herbs. What I want to talk to you about tonight is one of our main revenue streams, and that's garlic. So what's the problem with garlic? Well, quite frankly, grocery store garlic sucks. <laughs> the garlic sold in your grocery store, you, you go to the store, it's a little package of two, two or three pieces of garlic, right? Two or two, or one or two garlic, or two or three garlic cloves. Uh, yes. uh, it's one of two varieties, California Early or California Late. Uh, both varieties have been developed for long storage life at the expense of flavor. The other thing is, in order to further uh, increase that storage life, the few producers actually chemically treat those uh, cloves or those, those bulbs uh, to inhibit sprouting. 90% of the garlic sold in the United States originates from California, most in the Salinas Valley, where uh, water restrictions are already projected to affect both the cost the size and the quality of the 2022 harvest. Of the remaining 10%, 97% of that is imported from China, where the use of prison labor uh, and chemicals that are banned in both the EU and the United States uh, have been well documented. Both of these sources have extensive distribution chains uh, that are subject to a lot of vulnerabilities. Prices, like everything else, are rising, and the quality is, is really poor. So how does Windchime Farm intend to solve this problem? Well, first of all, we, we're local. We don't have a huge distribution chain. Uh, all of our suppliers are local. We don't use any insecticides, pesticides, or insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, uh, chemical fertilizers, or any sprout inhibiting chemicals on our product. Uh, we practice regenerative farming and ecologically sound a uh, humane method that, that is good for the earth. Uh, that, it's a whole different topic. We also offer variety and value. Uh, this year we've planted 10 different varieties of garlic with flavors ranging from creamy and buttery to, oh my God, my lips are gonna fall off. <laughs> uh, we also, because we're so small, uh, we have very low production cost. Our competitive advantage, we're unique. We are the only producer of culinary garlic varieties in Southern Colorado. Uh, our agricultural practices support healthy soil infrastructure. I've already, that's part of that regenerative farming thing. Uh, we're authentic. We grow our garlic traditionally. Everything is done by hand. Uh, tilling, furrowing, planting, cultivating, harvesting, curing, all done by hand. And the value is unbelievable. Uh, we like to say that, that uh, we provide champagne quality at wine prices. It's a little more expensive than beer, but it's, it's a great value for what you get. Our business model, uh, this year we're uh, anticipating our production cost at $3.24 a pound. Um, and we retail, uh, our retail price is set at $16 a pound. We believe this is reasonable because in 2020 and 2021, we were selling a small amount of garlic, uh, dozens of pounds basically, uh, for $20 a pound. And as you can see, by scaling up by year three, we expect to virtually cut our production costs in half. Our milestones, this year we have 1,500 square feet planted. Wow. Um, we should have 350 pounds of yield, uh, revenues of about $2,800. Three years, uh, year three, a quarter acre uh, should provide us with 2,500 pounds. We're not sure yet whether we're going to go to a five-year goal or not. Uh, I can talk about that after. Our team, uh, I'm the guy with the big ideas, uh, the grand ideas. My wife of 47 years, Meredy, uh, she's the one that kind of keeps me a little realistic, usually by saying, well, you can talk to your next wife about that. <laughs> uh, and then our, our two uh, department managers, our great-grandchildren, Dexter and Benjamin, right now they are on a two-year sabbatical uh, learning how to eat bratwurst and schnitzel. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Come on. Uh, so we want to become the place where healthy food naturally is more than just a tagline. Um, we intend to pay as we go. Uh, we're not going to invite any investors or any long-term debt. Uh, so our primary needs right now are advice, mentoring, and connections. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Dr. Amber Golshani, and I make fire cider, an apple cider vinegar wellness tonic. When I was a young woman, <laughs> I was living the fast food lifestyle, uh, which not only included fast food, but a lot of takeout and packaged foods. And of course, as 21 years old, I was doing a lot of smoking and drinking too. Um, and not surprisingly, I had some health issues. And my doctor at the time told me that nothing they could do about it. I was just going to have to be on prescription medication for the rest of my life. So, being this sassy young woman, I decided I was going to prove him wrong, and I did. In less than a year, I had completely, all of my symptoms were resolved. And what I did was stop eating the fake foods and stop eating, or start eating the real foods. <laughs> that experience of my own healing when the conventional medical world told me that there was nothing that could be done inspired me to go on and become a naturopathic doctor so that I could give people hope and I could help facilitate real healing and restore health. Americans are eating more of this fake food than ever, these ultra-processed food-like items. It's uh, estimated that 57% of our daily caloric intake is coming from these fake foods. So that means there's only about 40% coming from real foods. The real foods that contain the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients our body needs to work correctly. The way our bodies are designed to work when we eat these real foods. There was a study in Italy that showed during year one of the pandemic, 40% of the population adopted unhealthy habits, which included an increase in those packaged foods. So, you know, what's the big deal? Let's just eat processed food all day. Well, it's because that processed food is lacking the fiber, the vitamins, the minerals that our bodies need to work. And people feel bad. <laughs> that's, that's the main thing. Um, people feel poor. Their health is poor. So what's the answer? It, it's pretty simple, really. It's eat more real food and eat less of the other stuff. And you can see here, I have some studies that corroborate my conclusion here that when you eat more real food, you feel better, you have less illness, and you live longer. Those are all good things. We want that, right? Uh, so my fire cider is an easy way to get more of those plant-based whole food nutrients into your body. 75% of consumers are willing to pay more for clean label ingredients. Ingredients that you don't need a chemistry degree to understand what they are. It's real food. Apple cider vinegar sales increased 133% in 2021. That is the fifth fastest growing category of supplements. So what makes my product unique is that it's Pueblo. <laughs> and what is more hyper-local than Pueblo chilies? That is the most famous thing that Pueblo is known for, and it brings the fire to the fire cider. So in addition to the local produce I'm sourcing and the local honey, I'm making a fairly local product that is, has a less carbon footprint and is better for our environment, which then translates better for human health because, hey, we live here. So we need a healthy planet to live on too. This product will save my consumers time because they can use it in part of their cooking and in recipes, um, stuff that they're already doing, or they can take a shot of uh, this before their meals to get in that daily wellness. Right now, I'm under the Cottage Food Act where I'm selling direct to consumers through social media, farmers markets, and word of mouth. By the, I'm on track this year to sell 600 units. 
By the end of next year, I'm hoping to double that by partnering with restaurants and starting a subscription program. And at the end of the following year, I hope to be in a dedicated production facility, um, utilizing e-commerce to ship nationwide. So today, I'm here asking you all for information and resources for an $1,800 grant for an extra large capacity blender, which would just save me so much time. Um, looking, always looking for wholesale suppliers so that I can make a product that is 100% Colorado from farm to bottle. And then I'm asking the Pueblo Food Project for a farmer's market booth for all of the cohorts in this, in this group to share together. I'm Dr. Amber and I'm on fire to make a difference for people's health and our community. Thank you so much for listening and your time and your attention. I'm here for questions. Jocelyn um, Martinez with Soul Smile Health and Wellness. I am a certified master health coach as well as a healthy lifestyle chef. So I created my business because of this. This is my why, this is my heart, this is my family. I was the sick one in the family. I had an autoimmune disease. I had um, a lot of gut issues going on and we could not figure it out. And so I ended up going to a naturopathic doctor and found out I was allergic to gluten and dairy and shellfish and malt and vanilla. I have always been a foodie, but if you guys have family, this is my son and my daughter um, and my husband. And I was the sick one. If you ever have anyone in the family who is sick and has special healthy dietary needs, it's really hard to figure it out. It actually adds stress to the whole family. So I chose to get healthy for them and myself. By doing that, I went gluten and dairy free. And that's why I created Soul Smile Health and Wellness. And we are a health-based food company. We are 100% gluten free, 100% dairy free, and we use whole fresh food ingredients. We focus on creating and supporting healthy eating habits for our clients in a sustainable, stressless way that really allows them to focus on other areas of their life. We support healthy living, and I say healthy living because it isn't always about what's put, being put into your body, it's the way you're treating your body and how you're lessening your stress in your life. So with our meals that are gluten-free, dairy-free, we're taking out some of those allergens right away. All of our meals are fully cooked and cooled. You simply reheat them, which saves you time, and then we locally deliver in the Pueblo, Colorado area, and we have pickup available for those people that are outside of Colorado area, uh, the Pueblo area. So what we do what we love. So one of our main programs is our meal prep program. We have individual and we have family style meals. Our regular meals are meat based proteins. These, I use a Colorado, um, Colorado products. So our beef is Colorado natural, which is out of Boulder. And we also use Redbird. All of our meats are never ever products. That means there's never ever any antibiotics introduced to these animals or also taken out of the program. Um, our vegan meals, we don't use any meat substitutes. If you're a vegan with us, we will show you how to eat um, a whole base plant uh, diet. Uh, we do have a minimum. We do three meals per week, and this is not only for um, me to save me time, but it's also for my clients, and they're taken care of for three days out of the week. Um, we do catering, so that's special events. Um, caterings, we do party trays, and then we do lunch meetings that are box lunches. This is an easy way to have a nice catering event and knowing that you're knocking off two of the main allergies and you have your clients, your employees, your guests taken care of. We also do private um, chef events and retreats. So these are out of town events, retreats, we go to homes and do private chef work. This is all just to upscale your life and make healthy living easier. So this here is some of our meals. Up at the top, you see a family-style meal. This feeds four to six people. Um, you just reheat it and warm it up. Easy peasy cleanup. Um, at the bottom there is a raw vegan. We do raw vegan as well. Our pricing ranges from 12 to 14 for our individual, 45 to 55 for vegan um, for family meals, and then our caterings and special events range anywhere from 15 to 40. Um, we have a client support approach. So healthy lifestyle meals, like I said, gluten-free, dairy-free, homemade ingredients that support optimum function for our bodies. We are so fresh, so clean. That is my tagline, that is my trademark, and I swear by it. Um, I am here to support you with healthy, fresh-made meals, um, seasonal vegetables, and like I said, absolutely no meat substitutes. 
We use an individual approach with assessment forms for our clients, and this just helps really individualize their needs. We're here to communicate with our clients, and we deliver. Hi, it comes straight to you. Um, we are here for you. We are here for the busy individuals and busy families. Our lives are getting so busy these days, so we are here to support you. We are here for those with food allergies and just anyone who's looking to eat healthier without deprivation. Growth strategies, um, by July of this year, we are opening our space up to do pop-ups with a gluten-free, dairy-free food truck concept. Um, March of 23, I really want to start launching community table dinners that really bring neighborhoods together and people could come in one space and know their neighbors with healthy meals. January um, 2024, my goal is to really expand to bigger cities um, with our meal program if this is shipping or traveling and making more deliveries because we're already getting asks for other parts of our Southern Colorado area. My ask really is just to be connected with local farmers and producers and growers to utilize our local products and build that sustainable relationship into our business for that true like farm to table concept. Yes, we utilize the farms, but we wanna build that relationship. And then just talk to us, like we are here for the community and that is our goal. So thank you so much for listening. Hi everybody, all right, so I'm Kennedy Pugh and I grew up here in Pueblo. My parents were originally from Louisiana and I remember one of my first experiences going down to Louisiana was going to my mom's family's juke joint and barbecue place where there was plenty of dancing, plenty of fun, and some great, great, great barbecue. One of the things that I've noticed in the barbecue experience has been that people are, um, if you were like my mom and like my family, you want barbecue all year round. I mean, you just don't want it, you know, during the summer. You want that whole experience, you know? And so this is something that, that I'm going to continue to talk to you about. We also know that a lot of times people are just ignorant of like, you know, we don't really know how to barbecue. We don't know how to really get that, that great taste that you can find out at the restaurants that, you, that you're looking for. Um, the other thing is that it's kind of laborious. They find that the prep on it's like really just a lot and the, and the cleanup's also a lot. It messes up the grill, the way that some people do it, and, and there's things like that. And then you have the inconsistency of taste and you go to the supermarket and you see a plethora because everybody and their brother has a barbecue sauce, right? You probably have your own barbecue sauce. <laughs> and the other thing is this. When you go to a barbecue restaurant, I tell you what, I just went to a barbecue restaurant in Colorado Springs and there were two of us. I almost spent 70 bucks just on some simple barbecue. That was a lot. And when you want to bring the whole family, that's not cost effective. So, we have the solution for you. And our solution is first to take it home. What great experiences that you have happen in your own home. So first of all, we want to give you that online and, and, and also retail experience of just having a great barbecue experience with easy directions, with great taste, and this is the key. It's going to be a package deal. It's not just the barbecue sauce. It's going to be paired with a basting sauce or marinade. And that basting sauce is really, really the key. A lot of people will use a rub on their, with their barbecue sauce, I mean with their uh, barbecue. And what I find, my family has never used a rub. We've always used a basting sauce because the vinegar which you use in the basting sauce helps tenderize the meat, it helps infuse the spices deeper into the meat. I don't know if you've ever gone to a restaurant and it tastes like all of the seasoning is just on that top layer and it's not really ingrained in the meat and you kind of have to like mix it up in your mouth before you can really get to the, to, to really get that, that, that good flavor. Well, that's what this does. This makes certain that you have that thoroughly infused flavor all throughout your meat. And 
when you do it with the basting sauce, the cleanup is so much easier and the prep is so much easier. And also, we want to offer you variety as well because we want to infuse it also with the Pueblo chili that everybody loves. We love local. Once again, that's our basting and marinade sauce and also our barbecue sauce, which you also can use as, as a dipping sauce. Um, we will, we know that the competition, there really is not much competition out there because this is a, an original concept to have these two things paired together. All right, you can buy a marinade separate, but to put it together really kind of makes it great for the consumer because that consumer gets overwhelmed when they get right there. And most sauces are made for 57 cents per ounce. We think that we can come in on that same market kind of level, and but with adding the, the basing sauces with it, you're getting d double bang for your buck and, and a great experience. Um, we want to uh, also support Pueblo. Um, we want to work with some of the local Pueblo chambers with supporting Pueblo, the Pueblo chili growers, growers, the restaurant associations, and we have some great partners already, and our great partner is um, myself, of course, and um, my, my buddy who is a, um, he has 20 years in, in the culinary arts, and he has a master's degree in culinary, and I have marketing experiences, and then we're just looking for people who are interested in business, marketing, and mentorship, and financing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deb Hibbert, and the name of my company is The Gypsy Gardener. The main focus of my business is a hydroponic greenhouse where I'll be growing microgreens. Uh, when I retired from the Army, I wanted to pursue my second passion in life, which was growing plants. So I came back to Colorado and I got involved with the Veterans to Farmers program where I learned about controlled environment agriculture, more specifically aquaponics and hydroponics. And then I went on to do the Colorado Master Gardener program out of CSU Extension here in Pueblo County. I do have some questions for you. Um, my first question is, what do you really know about the food you eat? Where does it come from? California, Arizona, Mexico? How long has it been on that truck and how, how long did it take that truck to bring it from wherever to here? The problem is our food chain is broken. It's ineffective and unable to provide nutritious and good tasting food to the to consumers. So according to Grandview Research, the U.S. hydroponic market was valued at $171 million in the year 2019. Its expected growth is 19.7% and through the year 2028. After doing a lot of demonstrations, writing articles, teaching classes on microgreens, people are always amazed at the freshness, the flavor, and the quality of this product. So hydroponics are actually a good solution. It, we can offer a good solution to improving that food chain because this produce will be grown here in Pueblo. It reduces the amount of travel time, so you can come by and pick it up, or you can get it fresh at whatever restaurant or at whatever venue. Um, it's also good for the environment in that it uses a recycling nutrient solution, and it, so therefore it, it reduces the water usage as well as pesticide usage. As far as I know, there's only one other hydroponic um, produce grower and that is Farm Box Foods and he is actually using a container farm and using a vertical hydroponic system to grow and uh, supply Centura Health Network hospitals in Colorado Springs, Pueblo and Canyon City. I feel that the, the Gypsy Gardener's advantage is that I will be able to bring to you fresh, immediately available, nutritious and good tasting food and I can do it on a year round basis. The way I'm going to do this is I will take it to this produce to the local farmers markets. Um, I can also sell it to restaurants. Microgreens have been a part of the restaurant menu for over 20 years, so they're really not anything new. And like some other people in class tonight, 
I also am looking into doing like some kind of a food box where people could actually come by the farm, pick up a box either of salad greens, leafy cooking greens, herbs, etc. So I started growing microgreens about 10 years ago when I lived in Hawaii. I also did some super hot peppers in Dutch bucket um, hydroponic systems. A couple years ago, after I moved back to Colorado, I ventured out and tried the farmer's markets. I was selling Colorado hemp honey and some other cottage food products. Last year, I decided I would build a greenhouse to house my um, hydroponic system. Uh, that's about where it's at now. I'm hoping to get it finished by the end of the year. In three years, I'd like to be fully, um, completely operational. And some of my future concepts uh, and goals are, is to establish um, uh, education and uh, outreach opportunities for community youth and the veterans community. Some of my team members are Ryan Moore at the Greenhouse Megastore. He helped me get through the um, purchasing and setup of the uh, greenhouse. Rich Murphy, I've met him via email when I was still living in Hawaii, taken a few of his classes, and he's been a friend, instructor, and mentor um, forever. And he knows everything about anything about plants. He's your guy. Mm -hmm. Jenny Harris, she owns Am Hydro, who is the maker of my hydroponic system. They have uh, products in 50 states, 100 companies or countries, and so they're very well established and they set industry standards. I do have to tell a story. When I first moved here, my grandkids were eating chicken nuggets from McDonald's and the cheap, I'm glad Chris isn't here, the cheap salty ramen noodles. <laughs> so I started growing healthy food and every time they'd come over I'd say, here, try this leaf or try that flower. Now they come to me and they say, Grandma, what what kind of plants do you have? So let me inspire you to eat better, nutritious, and better tasting food. But to do that, I need help in getting the water system set up to the greenhouse, the internal system set up and operational, and I need the floor level. Thank you. Wow. Hello, everybody. I'm Tiffany with Third Generation Baking. You got it pointed right there. Peter, it's kind of ah, there we are. And who is third generation baking? Well, this is my management team. We are very deep, deeply, deeply rooted here in Pueblo. On the left here, we have our five generations of women. And this is our fourth generation on the right, myself and my children. A lot of people play a key part in third generation baking and uh, making the tasty products that we have. Our mission statement is uh, trying to change the world one bite at a time, bringing um, generations upon generations of tasty treats and baked foods. Uh, there we go. The problem is here in uh, Pueblo, there's not enough uh, representation of our Mexican pastries. Uh, in our, and being a Hispanic community, you would think that uh, out of 28 bakeries, there would be more, but there is only one Mexican bakery, and our grocery stores do carry a very limited supply of uh, baked goods. Um, customers are uh, mainly our Hispanic and our large communities. So uh, the usability of our treats can be enjoyed uh, by just about anyone. Um, and our cost is very effective. Uh, it costs about 31 cents to make an empanada and uh, we make about $1.25 on each empanada. Uh, and per the American uh, Baking uh, Society uh, or the baking industry employs over 800,000 skilled individuals a year and generates over $44 billion in direct wages. Uh, and that is an overall economic, economic impact of $154 billion a year. Money. <laughs> and when you have kids and family to, uh, to raise, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Just a little bit lower. Lower? There we go. Do you have a transition or? Oh my goodness, hold on, it just timed out. I wonder if the Wi-Fi just... Ooh, it's 
warm up here, guys. You're doing great. Yeah, you're doing it far. Okay, hold on. I'm just gonna. I just paused your time, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just being ready for the unexpected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Take a fan. It looks like the Wi-Fi is still fine. Can you try and use the arrow for that? We'll just do something else. We'll just, we won't have full screen for this one. Just to just click it over. You want to just click past that on your machine, yeah. Megan, rather than trying the clicker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. slide transition on that one. Okay, so we'll just leave it like not fully out. Technology, man. Sometimes you never know what's going to happen. I've never seen this happen before. We're a bad day to be on us. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay. That's so we'll just leave it kind of on this one and then I'll just sit right here and I'll, I'll click it. That's okay with you. Yeah. There we go. All right. So my market summary: uh, the Hispanic culture is uh, con uh, continuously integrating uh, uh, with society. Uh, palettes are expanding, and people are more open-minded to try new things. Uh, I think that would uh, be a good one for uh, for Pueblo. You know, we're very deeply rooted. We get busy, and you know, our grandmas are are even busier now than ever, and we don't get to enjoy those tasty treats. So, I think uh, their generation will be a good addition to Pueblo. Um, we are learning to cultivate and innovate um, our company to beat our competitors which we only have one really right now, so that's awesome and I can't wait to get out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, our product cost is low, uh, which gives us a market advantage also. Okay, our key issues. Um, so uh, near term, uh, we are just um, learning and trying to secure a brick and mortar uh, with an industrial oven. Uh, and the funding that we need for the key roles to keep our business going and to uh, make a profitable, profitable at success and stability. Uh, long term, uh, we want to learn to the most up-to-date marketing and advertisement and um, support from all of our Hispanic communities uh, and expand to other hi Hispanic communities and Canada at some point. 
uh, risks and rewards. I'll start with the good stuff first and uh, our rewards is uh, we are seeking financial stability. Um, we love our community, so we want our, uh, to um, get the community involved. Different programs, teach them how to bake, teach them how, you know, what grandma used to teach us when we were younger. Um, also, um, just keep our Hispanic heritage alive. You know, it's very, not very often nowadays that we take time to know where we came from and you know just the simple meals that we enjoyed with our families when we were younger. So. Uh, risks, um, not having a big enough uh, workspace uh, to create mass production um, and addiction. Uh, <laughs> everybody who's tried one of my empanadas always comes back from war. <laughs> <laughs> My business concept is uh, using third generation's uh, nine years of uh, production uh, throughout uh, the various uh, vendor events um, and uh, so that we may organize and manage uh, a workflow. Uh, we are going to thrive and become, uh, uh, because our market knowledge and the great um, team that I have behind me. So, you know, I have an amazing team and uh, we have all that support. So there's no doubt in my mind that we, we won't flourish. Um, and keep the tradition alive with our baked goods and our sweet treats. And that's the end. My name is Melissa Hartwell. Uh, my business is Pueblo Produce and Neighborhood Market. Uh, my husband and I moved here three years ago from California. And one of the things that we noticed were the shopping differences, um, access to produce. Um, we were really actually surprised about not um, seeing any produce <laughs> from Colorado. Um, there are 50 stores right now that qualify as fresh produce stores. There are 15 stores that qualify as specialty produce stores in, in Pueblo. Um, two stores have closed in the last six years. They have not uh, tried to replace them or, or meet them. 72% uh, of Puebloans have said that they would actually buy produce and fruit if it was in stores that they regularly shopped. Uh, this correlates to them, 62% of people shop in these highway stores, um, produce markets, the gas marts, uh, mom and pop stores. They don't find produce or fresh grocery in the area that they live. Um, the USDA has said that Pueblo is low access to food, and this means people drive more than five miles to a grocery store. Um, the concept that we have, and, and according to the report, um, is that Pueblo Produce is actually going to give fresh produce and food and local groceries to the people that live here. Uh, we believe in community and hospitality and that no one is above anybody else uh, in this town. Um, education and how people look at food, how they buy their food, how they are cooking their food. And in Pueblo, we have about 38% of the Puebloans that don't know how to cook it. Um, and that concept really comes... You gotta point it at the computer. <laughs> okay. I apologize. 72% um, don't buy it where they live. 60 3% can't get it where they normally shop. 38% of Puebloans don't know how to make it. Um, I don't cook, but I can bring an impact on the community and bring people to the store 
to show them how to make uh, food and dinner and or lunch from the produce that we bring. Pueblo Produce will provide the residents with a combination of quality produce, educated produce, um, and cooking in a warm atmosphere of a neighborhood store. And that's where our vision for a vibrant, healthy marketplace comes in. Um, we'll bring hospitality to the marketplace. I see it now. My competition. As you all know, Pueblo has an abundance of uh, these markets, mom and pop markets, grocery store markets, or not grocery store, but um, your gas station market. And you go into these places and you'll look, and they do have produce, but they don't have fresh produce. It's spoiled, it's rotten. Thank you. Um, so my competition are the big box stores. And where I'm going to beat out the competition is in my service, which I'm a hospitality professional, and that's my career. Uh, it's product, it's local product. We walked into these stores, and no stores have local produce. Uh, Palisades is on the other side of the mountain. There's no fruit. There's no, none of this. So we will have a much better uh, shopping experience for our people, for Pueblo, <laughs> and what we bring to the table, gosh, this is so much, uh, is community and hospitality. Um, and food, teaching people how to treat food. Um, the next steps for me are purchasing a building, which is going to be leased by the market. Um, this market in the downtown area will teach people how to cook, how to look at food, how to can food, how to bring the producers that are in Pueblo and get their stuff to the market. Um, I have a delivery concept that's going along with it. Um, I have an amazing team that's helping me through this. Um, not alone, it's people like Alan and, and your, your food. Um, we're prepping food, we're teaching food, we're giving people a market in downtown, uh, supporting the local produce of pigs or produce or garlic. It's a market for the downtown and for the people that live here. It's a market that you can come in, grab what you need, and go. Um, and I have a great team. My husband is the chef at Garden of the Gods uh, Resort. He is helping me write the hazmat program that I need and the licensing. We will teach people how to can uh, fruit and vegetables. Oh my goodness. <laughs> fruit and vegetables. Uh, and I, I appreciate it. So what I figured, hello, oh darling. Why is there a dog? Yes. I don't know, but I'm a dog person, and I also make dog turkeys. So keep going, keep going. Sorry, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's okay. Um, it's a market that people want to shop at. They can afford to shop at. They'll actually support their farmers and their local growers. Um, in this market, we're going to show them how to cook the ingredients. It has a deli uh, that has uh, Colorado-based ingredients. We'll be selling to businesses around the area. Uh, and it also has a produce distribution component. Um, we'll be taking produce to the areas that are rural, um, that can't access it like we can if you live in a larger city. Um, I'm very, very and, nice. Uh, can you hit the ask right now? The we're ask. Over. All right. So, 500,000 small business loan for the market. And then I'm also in a separate entity um, asking for a real estate loan. Uh, TMH Enterprise is my business right now. I have a business here in Pueblo. I had Denver and Colorado Springs. And part of the, one of the most important people to say on the team is um, 
BKD, which is a financial advisory um, accountant. And she's the one that handles all of my paperwork. So I believe in creating a team of experts. Um, whether you're a financial expert, a website expert, um, we'll, we'll make it happen. The ask is 500,000 uh, for the market, 800,000 for the store, for me to purchase a building and I'll lease it to the store. Uh, I'm gonna put in 20,000. I also expect to be able to pay off these loans for the next five years. Um, I am a cash business and I will be paying off all these things in cash. Hi, my name is Shaylin Valdez, and I'm the owner and operator of Soap Cat Productions, LLC. Just turn the little. Oh no. All right, so let's go with the problem, the problem with modern day bathing today. Let's see if this works. Is there a transition in there? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. yes. Um, Maybe just use the machine. Just use the machine. All right. So first thing is it's boring. I can't tell you how many times you go to somebody's bathroom and it's just boring old, just white soap, boring, you know, just everything. It's just plain, you know, it's, not, it's just bathing, like nothing to it. Second thing is it can be irritating to skin. Now, I wash my hands a lot. And I'm not sure if the, you guys do, um, especially with the pandemic, but I know that a lot of soaps, a lot of bath bombs, a lot of just everything can dry your skin out or irritate it. I'm allergic to a lot of things. And when I used to wash my hands, they used to get a lot of hives. They used to bleed. It, it just wasn't pretty. And that's the whole reason that I started doing this, was so that I can make something that's not going to do that. And the last thing is, it can be a chore. I know that a lot of times you're relaxing in bed, you just wake up, you're, you're like, ah, oh, shower time, ah, oh, I gotta do that. It, a lot of times it can be a chore, especially if it's not very fun, if you're using boring products and it's irritating your skin, of course it's gonna be a chore. Mm -hmm. So, how do we solve this? Well, we solve this first with gentle formulas and ingredients. So what we do is we pride ourselves in using formulas that are going to be gentle for your skin and ingredients that are going to be of the highest quality. So some of the ingredients I love to use are things like cocoa butter, sweet almond oil, and mango butter. These are luxurious oils that are going to absorb fast into the skin and aren't going to dry them out. Um, also with the formulas, I formulate each product to make sure that it's not going to irritate your skin or create that unwanted, like scratchy feeling after you get out of the shower. Second thing is luxurious scents. You know, soap's only as good as, as it smells. And same with like bath bombs. Things you don't want to smell. You don't want to bathe in a bacon bath bomb, do you? <laughs> and if you do, then maybe I could get. Maybe I can do something <laughs> for you. But some of the scents that sell really well for me are things like Juicy Pear, Clean Cotton, Oceanside Breeze. My husband loves. Uh, cherry cola, that's his favorite one. But these all add to the experience, make it more fun. Lastly, with unique and exciting designs. So we want something that's gonna be a centerpiece in your bathroom, something that's gonna be exciting to you, something fun to look at as well. So with our designs, we make sure that we bring the fun into bathing. So who buys our products and where? So who buys our products first? Well, primarily those who enjoy a handmade artisan good and who also like fun designs, cute designs, good smells. You know, if, if you like those things, then we'll have something for you. So where could you buy our products? Right now we sell primarily at craft fairs. Um, we do sell like at Pizza Ranch. We do a table there um, about once every, every two weeks. And we have a website, but we're working on reworking it. That way it's easier to navigate and looks better for you. Oh no. Yay. Okay. So our products, let's go a little bit into the products. So we've got soap, 
bath bombs, lip balms, solid bubble bath, all of these are going to make your experience a well-rounded one so you can enjoy yourself. So who's our team? Well, you're looking at her. <laughs> um, my name is Shailen Valdez, like I said, I'm 21 years old. I used to work as a freelance artist doing art, uh, different art for like companies, different arts for like YouTube channels. So that's what I've been doing and that's why I brought my creative ability to this business. I also love cats. <laughs> so my art background is really going to bring more into this business. It's going to bring that creativity element to the next level, whereas other companies might not have that. So to summarize, Soapy Cat Productions is the future of bathing. It's going to create a good experience for you and it's not going to be irritating for your skin. You get the whole bundle package in one. So, in honor of my cat Biscuit, he's not dead, just stinky. <laughs> Welcome to First Flight Farms, until recently, Colorado Yardbirds. I'm Allison, and um, I'll be telling you about my local chicken and duck meat. Poultry is the most readily available meat in this country uh, due to its high palatability and culinary flexibility. More than $13 billion worth of poultry is eaten in, this, in the U.S. every single year. Uh, however, the U.S. lags behind countries such as France, Vietnam, and Myanmar in terms of duck production. And duck is generally perceived by consumers as an upscale and exotic protein option. Have you ever cooked bland, cardboard textured chicken from the grocery store? It's uh, hard to cook to the right doneness. It's been injected with a salt solution to enhance flavors and also to add a little weight that you have to pay for. That's the product of factory farms which pump out massive amounts of meat at the expense of flavor, nutrition, and chicken welfare. 98% of all chickens in the world today are uh, raised in these overcrowded systems. Uh, through Nice to have a tech run. Sorry. Pol all good. Poultry is the most readily available meat in this country, with over $13 billion of it sold in the U.S. every year. Uh, however, the U.S. lags behind countries such as Myanmar, Vietnam, and France when it comes to duck production. Through market research and customer outreach, I have identified four customer segments uh, who are interested in pastured poultry. Chefs who want to serve delicious local food to their discerning customers. Foodies who love sharing and bragging about their exciting meals online. Taste explorers who are searching for new and exciting flavors. And parents who want to serve wholesome food to their families. Raising ducks and chickens outdoors with access to grass, bugs, and Colorado sunshine creates a nutritious, wholesome product and offers the birds an enjoyable life doing what birds love to do. This healthy lifestyle is transferred to the eaters uh, with higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids, the good fats. The birds also serve an ecological function, uh, regenerating weedy land into productive soil suitable for orchardry and gardening. First Bite Farms offers meat you can feel great about eating. Healthy birds mean healthy dishes and the satisfaction of knowing that your food is free of hormones and unwholesome additives lets you serve your family and guests knowing that they will be well nourished. In addition, knowing about the positive environmental effects of pasture-raised meats uh, addresses the growing segment of consumers who are concerned about the way that we produce food. Our initial flock of 475 birds is going to take $16,000 to bring to market and two, works, two months of work as well. Uh, after that point, future flocks will be a little bit easier to produce because we'll have their housing situation set up. I see sales to restaurants being a major source of advertising and growth because having the name of a local farm on the menu gives chefs prestige and local food credentials. As well, it's a mutually beneficial relationship because getting our name out there demonstrates value to potential direct sales customers. And the chef's skill at preparation will uh, ensure consumers are introduced to these new flavors in an ideal setting. Well, I'm very motivated to make these connections this year to set us up for our big production year of 2023. I'm currently excited to be in talks with a local USDA poultry processor uh, with their one minute. 
they'll help me produce pardon out birds and allow my profit margins to go to a healthy 29% up from the um, very tight 12% I was working with last year. Uh, about me, I'm me and the birds with the whole team. I'm a second year farmer, uh, formerly worked in restaurants, and I'm happy to bring my knowledge of how to serve high-end customers to the far back of house in farming. Um, I've also got some experience in social media marketing, which I intend to use to get our name out there to customers. I am absolutely passionate about chicken and duck husbandry, and I cannot wait to create a more localized and equitable food system. First Flight Farms. We're excited to take our own first flight this year. Thank you guys.